It's time again this week that we get to visit with our Nebraska Extension Agricultural Climatologist, Al Dutcher. I'm Shaylee Peters joining you on the Rural Radio Network. And Al, as we looked back on this week, we did get quite the mix of weather coming in earlier in the week. Saw uh, some rains for part of the state. That temperature definitely dipped down. Sunshine, though, leading into uh, the weekend. What will we see for a forecast this weekend and headed into next week? Well, Shelley, I think the overall riding theme is going to be a return to the heat, and it's just a matter of how much wind are we going to have to deal with, and how soon do we start to get the relative humidity levels back up to where we start to get into the uncomfortable rain. And all of it's going to be the result of a trough out in the western United States that's trying to work against this big upper air ridge in the southeastern United States. So between these two pressure systems, of course, you're going to deal with a little bit more wind. But more importantly, you have basically a southwest and northeast flow coming off of this trough. And so most of the storm activity that does develop and expected to develop within this trough and mechanism, at least going through this weekend, is likely to form right on the lee of the Rocky Mountains and portions of north central Colorado and and, uh, Wyoming, and then move that up toward the northeast. So really the only impacts that I see primarily this weekend is likely to occur across the panhandle where we'll have those chances for thunderstorm activity. Some of that may eventually make it way out into the western third of the state. If we can really get the heat up in the upper 90s into the low 100s, we may be able to break the cap, but then you're dealing with big, severe outbreaks. But overall, as the week progresses, that upper air trough and pattern is expected to take that low pressure system across the northern plains and kind of pull that trough apart somewhat. So you will still see energy moving out of that trough, but most of it will be directed toward the Dakotas. Well, as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, at least from the GFS model standpoint, things have changed a little bit. It's starting to look like they want to keep a piece of that trough back over the central rocks and start to induce a little bit of weak southerly flow, allowing some uh, low pressure to develop on the east side of the mountains in the southern Rockies. That might be able to juice up enough moisture coming northward from the Gulf to actually intersect the low pressure system that remains going over to the Great Lakes. So you have cool air coming in from the northeast, intersecting warm moist air, trying to bring turn back to the north. And as we get into Thursday night and Friday morning right now, the latest GFS indicates the possibility of severe thunderstorm development in northern Kansas, maybe moving up into the southern I-80 corridor and also into the Panhandle region. After that, it becomes a little bit more uncertain, and that would break our temperatures because we're going to be in the mid to upper 90s across a good portion of the western part of the state for sure. It's going to be very miserable. And as we get into the midweek period, of course, lifting that moisture up, we're going to start to see dew points back up into the 70s, dealing with severe weather. And if you look at what we've seen for severe weather during the first 10 days of the month, we finally doubled our total tornado count from four, and we received five so far this month. 64 hail counts and 127 wind accounts. So that gives you an idea. We've seen the active weather. We're just not getting as much moisture to the surface. So there is the opportunity, at least in the models, for us to finally maybe see some light at the end of the tunnel across portions of the state that really have missed out on many of these precipitation events. But we're going to have to get to the end of next week first. All right. Thanks so much, Al. It's Nebraska Extension Agricultural Climatologist Al Dutcher.